So let's talk about Will Fitman. Everybody has their opinion on Will Fitman. Who's lowered, whose car's too high, how much wheel gap, how many fingers can you fit in between, is it cambered in, is it tucked in, but we're not gonna go down that hole. But what we're gonna talk about is wheel studs and spacers and how to get your wheel to the correct fitment. The best way to get the wheel fitment is ordering the right size wheel for your setup, but you, everything can vary from hey, the price of the wheel, if you have a custom wheel that's available when you need them, and mostly it has to do with price and, and what's available. Most people get something that's close, and depending what tires end up running, they may need to move their wheel in or out 5, 10, maybe sometimes even 20 millimeters to fit their desired fitment. So today we're going to talk about what studs are available what spacers are available and which one's going to be best for you whether we use slip-on ones or bolt-on ones and what I've come up with over the years of me trying to get stuff to work what would be the best for you an option on your car. Wheel studs on the market we have quite a few options to pick from and they range from strength, length and price. This is a uh, the Nismo wheel studs here they are 60 mil and the, this pack right here alone which would only do the front of your car cost $130. ARP, they have many different options from quick start to 60 mil to really long and they are the strongest ones on the market and these will probably cost you right about $30 for five of them. For uh, the Nissan specific, uh, we have the ISR studs which is a 70 mil quick start stud and we also have like a circuit sports system on the mother stud and these things only cost right about two dollars a stud so these are actually very affordable they're not as strong as the ARPs but they actually are stronger than the, the Nismos alright when picking a stud you need to really determine what you're going to be doing with your car is it going to go on one time and be done and when it's just like you've already set what kind of spaces you're going to need or is it going to be on something like I'm drifting a car and I constantly take on and off on and off fast impacts or not really torquing them all the time just because of the the time you have or like how many times you really need to change the tires like if you're going to be drifting and you know these things are going to come off 10 to 20 times a day per event over the lifespan i highly suggest you run the arps they are really really durable studs and i mean honestly i don't think i've ever really stripped a broken one and i've put quite a few tires on cars over my days working here at Njuku, especially being on the, the race team for many years. So there are multiple different types of spacers on the market. You have slip-on spacers and bolt-on spacers. I'm sure you guys have heard of those options. Let's determine the best time to use a slip-on spacer or whether or not we would be best to use a bolt-on spacer. So this is a OEM hub right here. And these are OEM studs. And you can go, as I'm saying, like from this small stud right here is pretty short from the factory you're only really using the factory wheels that have really big depth and you only have a very small lug nut to go on this and you can go all the way from that to something this long when using a ARP option and this is what the ones that we normally end up using on the FD cars or all our drift cars and it just because it gives us the option to change the spacer and not really have to worry about what the remaining length is going to be on the spacer. So let's show you what will happen if the studs are too short and you want to end up having to run a spacer. So you've got the hub and just to show you with a with a rotor on it that makes up that little bit of extra distance in there. If you wanted to run a 20 mil spacer on your setup because your, your wheels are just not sitting flush to where you want them to be or there you feel like you need to fill up some of that fender gap. We have a ISR 20 mil slip on spacer here and some of them come in different multi patterns, so you need to find which one's going to fit for you. As you can see right here, if you put the wheel on, you're not going to be able to even get the wheel on. This is going to, the lug nuts will not thread on there. So this is in a perfect example when you're going to need to do an extended stud and use the slip-on spacer. So if we were to try it with this one here, which already has the ARP extended studs in them. You see that there's plenty of stud left, so you can end up putting the spacer on and have plenty. You actually have probably too much stud here to 
even use the factory style lug nut that has a closed end. And that's why we have like this one here's a Muteki SR48 open-ended lug nut. And the reason it's open-ended is this, the same thing. You're gonna have an extended amount of stud left over, so you're gonna it's gonna protrude past the opening. And so you have to keep that in mind when you're ordering the different lengths of the wheel studs. Am I gonna need to get new lug nuts for it also? Let's talk about when we're going to use a bolt-on spacer. The idea behind a bolt-on spacer, which is just a H and R spacer here, comes with this is a 20 mil bolt-on spacer, and what it does is it has a area for a special lug nut that comes with it to sit recessed inside of the factory stud, and then giving you a new bolt pattern with its own studs pressed into then essentially come up with the same thing but without having to extend the studs out too far you can actually probably go ahead and get your factory style or closed end lug nut to, to work on these ones. Now why would you want to use these? Well that's just it. It is very easy and very simple to, to use these ones. It's just that they cost a little bit more. When you're looking on a regular stud and a step on spacer, you're, you're spending under $100. Uh, just for a pair of these is going to cost you right around $150. But no modifications. You don't even have to press out your old studs. So you don't have to remove your wheel bearing or do any of that. You just simply slip them on, bolt these down. Sometimes you do have a little bit protruding, but most of the aftermarket wheels have a space for you to clear this on the back side of the wheel so that's also one thing you want to check if not you can probably end up just cutting these down and it will, it will clear your wheel totally fine one common issue that I've seen to do myself multiple times actually on my own personal vehicles is that I always put extended studs in whenever I'm assembling a car for my own personal use you know just in the hopes or in the future, I may want to change the wheels or I may want to run spacers, but what I always seem to forget is I really need to determine what length studs I'm going to need as I've run into a few problems where I've lowered my car to where the wheel is tucking just a slight amount, but then I've put overly long studs in and when I go to go try to take them off, try to take the wheel off, top of the wheel is hitting the arch and now I can't get the wheel off and there's nothing more frustrating than you setting the right height of your car trying to take the wheel off and you've got way too long of a stud and you can't get the wheel off now I have to disconnect the shock just to get the wheel down to, to get it off um, so that's one thing to keep in mind so if you've got a 60 mil wheel stud you've got that 10 mil on there and if I was running a 20 mil spacer it may actually be more viable for me to run this setup with a 20 mil spacer because it will be that much shorter and it would allow me to take the wheel off in those moments that I do have the car lowered and, and want to take the wheel off without having to pull the shock off. So that's actually a couple things that you need to keep in mind when you're, you know, how, how low is your car, how much space are you putting on there, how wide is your wheel, what's the offset of your wheel, and really determine that, you know, if you, you're going to be taking that wheel off to change tires. So you don't want to have to keep disassembling stuff to get it off while just, just to get your wheel spacer on there. You don't want to have to take your shock off to go ahead and get the wheel off. So I've made the mistake a few times of actually my car is now sitting at the height that it can be at with uh, allowing the extended studs for me to get the wheel off. I would like it to be a little bit lower, but I'm not going through all the hassle of changing the stud again. So I hope this information is uh, going to help you determine whether or not you want to do studs, extended studs and spacers, or if you're just going to go ahead and do a bolt-on style spacer. You know, it all depends on price and availability. You know, these ones uh, do come in multiple different sizes, not just a 20 mil or 25 mil. You have 5 mil, but most 5 mil ones are going to be slip on. And it also depends on how much this is going to cost. Uh, either way, we have all the options here in Njuku. We even sell the expensive Nismo wheel studs, but you know, a lot of people do like them. They've been around for a long time, and it is the OE replacement for a, for a long, longer stud. We also have many varieties of the ARPs for those who like the, the really, really strong studs. And we also have the very Nissan specific, pretty much uh, 240 specific circuit sports and ISR studs available on Juke.